Welcome to your iconic image. If you want to take control of your image and be a power player in your space, then this is the show for you. Here we will arm you with tools and information to help you grow your brand on purpose. I'm your host, Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Now let's dive into today's episode. As an introverted extrovert, Brian Galkey purposely chose professions where people came to him to help ease his social anxiety. He was constantly trying to pick up a new tip or trick to better interact with people. But the number one skill that changed his life was learning facial feature analysis. Brian is one of less than 100 people in the world who is certified in facial analysis and one of the few who actually teaches these subtle skills for an enhanced life. Welcome, Brian. Hello, thank you. So I'm just going to kind of let you dive right into it and you tell us what we can learn from somebody's face. Sure. I'll start with how I found this. And because it's a learned skill, that's the number one thing. When people see what we're going to cover today, everybody thinks, oh, this was something that you just came up with or something that you know, you were born with. And it is absolutely not. What happened to me is in 2011, I met a gentleman and he read my face and I was immediately blown away because like you mentioned earlier, I'm kind of an introverted extrovert and I love to be around people, but I was terrified of being around people at the exact same time. So if you see my maroon bookcase over here, that's one of my bookcases and it's full of books like uh, how to win friends and influence people, body language books, NLP books, you name it, because While I felt like I belonged around people at the same time, I felt like I didn't belong. And I lived a lot of time in the prison of my own mind because I was overthinking everything. And when I met Mac Fulfer, he was actually a kind of a quick, funny story. Somebody was in town for a trade show and we were supposed to go to dinner and she called up to cancel on me. And I just sat down at dinner and I'm like, well, I'm staying. And she's like, no, you have to come meet this guy. I said, no, I've already ordered my glass of wine. I'm staying here. You know what? Thanks for bailing. She said, trust me, come and meet this guy. And I went over there and he read my face and everything was so accurate. I immediately was like, how do I find this out? It turns out he lives 40 minutes away from me. And so I spent time over the next year, he would get have a get together twice a month where you could go and learn about different facial features. And then he has a certification as well. And I was instantly hooked and I convinced one of my friends to do it with me so that when we went out in public, we could make it a game and talk to everybody. And what the real true power of it all is it got me out of the prison of my own mind into the present moment. And that's what I teach some people today is if you have concerns about networking or cold calling or anything like that, just in what I'm going to show you guys, you can look at people's eyebrows and their eyebrows alone will tell you a little bit about them. And the whole reason I teach eyebrows is because eyebrows lead to eye contact. And so that's always a a takeaway that people can get from here. So with that, I'll kind of jump into the presentation and um, everybody can reach out to me. There'll be the QR code at the end, but um, at Subtle Skills, Subtle Skills is my website, you name it, or Brian Galkey's, you can see kind of on here. So with that, let me start sharing. Feel free to jump in at any time because I do get passionate about this. I do live in Dallas, Texas, but I was raised by New Yorkers. So I talk (laughs) fast and I say (laughs) y'all. And if anyone is strictly listening to this. I know Brian will be talking through some of this, but if you really want the full effect, go over to the YouTube channel and check out the entire presentation. Fantastic. Can you see the, uh, the main page here? I sure can. Okay. All right. So that's what we're going to teach everybody today is how can you enhance rapport and build relationships strict by learning, strictly by learning to read faces. Ironically, I was at an event with Steve Sims this past week in Phoenix and somebody was talking about the four pillars, what everyone needs. And it was first one was physical safety. Second one was mental safety. And third was people want to feel seen and heard, and they also want to feel connected. And that's what's really cool about what I teach you today is that's something you can instantly do because when you're focusing on reading somebody else's facial features, they feel seen and heard for the first time in a long time. And it changes everything. Um, One of the girls, and this is going to sound really funny for everybody listening, some girl cried when I read her face and I used to get freaked out and I would step away from it. But when you're talking about what somebody's face says, and for example, she had rounded eyebrows and she had rounded chin and some other rounded features, but she had a little line below her lower lip and above her chin called a verbal affirmation. And when you put these things together, what I knew is she always thinks about the people around her and that'll make more sense in a minute. But I said, but she has this little verbal affirmation line. So if you've ever read the book, The Five Love Languages, words of affirmation is how some people feel loved and seen. And when I said that, I said, look, I know you're so busy doing everything for everybody else, but if you don't tell people what you're doing, they can never say thank you and make you feel whole. And she burst out into tears in front of everybody. And it's not tears of sadness. 
it's realizing this whole time she hasn't been getting what she needed, but it's literally written on her face. So mm -hmm. I love starting with stories like that because not, I made somebody cry, but somebody felt seen and heard. And that's what you can do just by giving people a few minutes of your time. Mm -hmm. So with that, who am I? I'm Brian Galke. The only reason I put it up here is because uh, I always have just subtle skills and people wonder, well, who is the person behind it? So that's me. What are we going to talk about today is really how to change every interaction you have and how this one skill, once you learn it, it's helped me, my clients, everybody else achieve both personal and professional success. Like I mentioned earlier, I went from the help desk to regional vice president of sales, all because of this one skill now added with other skills, but this is the one leading the pack on how I became more successful. So literally went from 30,000 a year to much more than that, all based on learning to read faces. Uh, what are today's challenges? Well, we, you know, we can't really necessarily around the world meet face to face anymore. And a lot of our work is just like today where we're looking in Zoom. So you don't only see so much of somebody's face. Or if you are lucky enough that you can get to meet people, a lot of places still have mask mandates in place. So what facial features can you still see? It's hard. Like we're natural Ripley, uh, lip readers. Well, if I'm talking like this and we can't see each other's lips, are they smiling behind the mask? What are they? We lost a lot of the skills that we used to be able to use in the past. Now, here's the crazy part. We've actually all been trained to a degree in face reading. We just never been formally taught. And we use it in our everyday language. So if I say, keep your nose to the grindstone, take one on the chin, keep a stiff upper lip, we're all talking about what somebody's face says about them and it describes their personality. And that's one of the things that I just love is every time I hear a phrase, I'm like, ooh, 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 and I catch another one and write it down. <laughs> and people always ask, what's it based on? No, I did not create it. This has been around since the Greeks. It's based on something called physiognomy, which is understanding a person's temperament or character based on their outward appearance. Now, it doesn't say, are you a cheater? Are you a criminal? Anything like that. All that it really says is your face can tell people, how do you take in and process information? And it's crazy insane how accurate it is. Is it 100%? Absolutely not. But the amount of people I've met and read their face it's very rare that something is way off base. Now there are times that it is, but it's in the high nineties in, in terms of accuracy. What I absolutely love about it is this was the first proactive skill that you could do. So what I mean by that is we can go into social media, grab somebody's picture, analyze their face. And then we feel like we're meeting a friend versus cold calling somebody. I actually did this when I went to Steve Sims event in April of last year. I had no idea who anybody was besides Steve, but he added me to the Facebook group. And as people were saying, hey, I'm so excited. I can't wait to be there. I would take a screenshot of their face and I would analyze their features. Then when I got there, I would just go up and start talking to them. And because I knew how they process information, they're like, oh, had, is this your third or fourth time here at the Speakeasy? I'm like, no, this is actually my first time. But people feel like they know you because you're learning to speak their language. And when I used to do presentations, I was part of a group that any client over a million dollars, they threw me, flew me and two other people out to do these presentations. Well, if you've ever done presentations, everything in the hotel is, is my PowerPoint working? Is my presentation working? Is the projector working? But people, that fourth P was always the unknown. Now I could prepare, like, who am I going to meet with? And I'd go and read their face. Or even if I walked into the room, because I didn't know who's going to be there, I would look for key features. Like I'm going to teach you guys on the eyebrows. And I knew when I was talking to that person, I actually look at them and point at them because their eyebrows tell you a little bit about them. I talked about this earlier. I think everyone should learn body language. Learning to read a room is absolutely invaluable. Two of my favorite books right here is What Everybody's Saying by Joe Navarro. That one's to understand other people's body language. And then my friend Janine Driver wrote the book, You Say More Than You Think, which is about looking and examining your own body language. I think that book is more prevalent right now and more important because as we're stuck doing Zoom and we're stuck at home, we kind of quit paying attention to how we interact with people because we only see this much of ourselves. So I highly recommend picking up Janine's book. The challenge with body language is just like the people who are listening today, you can't see us, right? You're listening on the audio, but even the people who are watching the YouTube, they can't see what's going on below here right? Are my arms crossed? Are your arms crossed? Are my legs crossed? You know, are my hands in my pockets? Now, because I'm talking with my hands, you know where mine are, but we have limited visibility, especially now that we're doing phone calling, video, and there's actual meetings. If you're lucky enough to get an in-person meeting, most times somebody's laptop is in front of them hiding their body. So you can't even really see that much. And for the people who aren't on, the next thing when you're present, 
the thing about reading faces is you're giving people your time and attention and you're looking at them in the face. And when you look at somebody, you know, when somebody's paying attention to you and they're making eye contact versus if somebody's looking down and away. And that's why the real trick to body language is you have to kind of look at body language through your peripheral view versus directly staring at somebody. And too many people, like in the example we have here, the guy's looking down while he's talking to people and people don't feel like he's being present in the moment. And that was a game changer for me because when you're never looking away and you're not distracted by your phone or your smartwatch or anything else, it makes a huge difference in how people react to that because they do feel number three and four, we talked about four, they feel seen, they feel heard and they feel connected. And it completely changed my life. Other books I mentioned earlier, how to win friends and influence people. Everyone should have this, but this book used to encourage you to look around people's office and pick things to talk about. You know, do you see any sports emblems? Do you see any pictures of family? You name it. And those are things that you just can't do anymore because again, we're looking at zoom. You can see a few things in my house, depending on which way I change my desk, by the way, stand-up desks with wheels on them are awesome because I just completely change where I want to go every other day. Um, so I feel like I'm getting to go places, even though I'm not leaving this room. <laughs> very often. Um, the challenge with it is, like you said, over phone, email, Zoom, conference rooms, you really don't get to see a lot about the environment anymore. And there's also a second half to this. People are like, oh, no problem. I'll ask a bunch of questions. Well, until you understand what their level of comfort is talking about themselves, you may be asking questions, but people feel like you're doing this and you're just getting in their face and almost interrogating them. And it's a terrifying thing for a lot of people. So I always like to start off with celebrities because people watch TV shows, right? So these are three celeb or four celebrities from something called The Voice. And when I look at them, the first thing, the very first thing that I look at is I see people who have larger ears and smaller eyes. Now, a question that comes up all the time is, well, people's ears are always going to be larger than their eyes. It's correct. It's looking at compared to the size of their face. Do their eyes look larger or smaller? Same thing with their ears. But if you look at all four of the people here, they have larger ears and smaller eyes. Well, that's not surprising because if you ever watch the voice, they would start like this, listening until they heard something they liked. Then they would turn around and physically see the person. So if you're talking to somebody who has larger ears and they have smaller eyes, then you would change it to auditory phrases. Hey, does this sound like a good idea? Do you hear where I'm coming from? Um, have you heard blah, blah, blah. And so you can change this. If somebody has larger eyes and they have kind of smaller ears, then I change it to visual things. Do you see where I'm coming from? Picture this, you know, you can just continue to play with it. And let's say you can't read somebody's face. Then you just add in all three. Does this sound like a good idea? Can you see where I'm coming from? Uh, can you wrap your hands around this, which is a kinesthetic way to talk to people as well. And I'll actually do that for presentations. I look at if it's a lead behind that I'm gonna give to somebody, what I'll do is I design it for the, the main person who's gonna receive it. Because if you've ever read the book, The Five Love Languages, the way that somebody receives something may be different for each individual person. So if I see somebody who's more visual, I'll put in a majority of visual terms and pictures, but in case they're gonna pass it off internally, then I'll add in some auditory and some kinesthetic words. So I'm speaking to the entire audience, but I'm focusing on my original contact. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Fascinating. Okay. <laughs> and I get passionate about this. So I talk fast. So it feels free to slow me down. Um, you know, right now I'm thinking to myself, thank goodness this is being taped because I'm never going to remember all this and I need to. <laughs> well, good news is I, I do have, you can follow me on Instagram. I put little tips up all the time. I have a virtual training system. You can access 24 seven watch videos. And I always put out cheat sheets and everything too. Um, the fun part here is how long does it take to learn it? This is hands down my favorite thing. I can actually show you um, on Facebook. One of the people who attended the seminar I talked about last Monday we were talking about auditory versus visual. He reached out to his office manager. He's a chiropractor and he looked at her picture and she has larger ears. So when he's talking to her, he's like, Hey, I just want to make sure that I'm hearing everything that's going on in your world. You know, I want you to know I'm listening when you talk. And instead of her just saying, okay, she sent him this long paragraph about everything going on in the office. And he came up to me. He's like, Oh, I used this yesterday. I used it. I said auditory words because I saw she's got larger ears and look at this response. And it changed the way that he is now interacting with his office manager, which is going to help him. So instead of making it about the way he wanted to say it, he changed it to how would she best receive it? And it already changed their dynamic. And that's just after learning one thing. 
Love that it. was crazy. Yeah. All right. So with that, we're going to jump right in and I'll try to remember that there's some people who are just listening. So I'll walk through all these. There's a few steps. Super simple. Number one, if you know who you're going to be talking to, then you get on, you look them up on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. What if you don't know who you're going to meet with? What I do is if I'm going to a presentation somewhere in an office. I will actually show up early and I'll say, hey, I'm here for this meeting and presentation today. Can you tell me who all I'm going to be meeting with? And what I'll do is I'll grab one of their business cards and I'll go look them up while I'm sitting in the waiting room. So I got a few extra minutes that helps me prep. The other thing that you can do is if you're going into a client or a website, almost everybody has a picture of who's important on the about us page of a website. So you can actually do research in numerous different ways. Number two, find a good picture of their face. What's a good picture of their face? Straight on, well lit. And you'll understand when we start showing features here in a minute, why that's important. But when you tilt things, it changes the way the features look when you're looking at it. Once I find a, a face, there's two ways to really read a face. The first one is, hey, what stands out? So if you were a characterist and you were drawing their face, what would they overemphasize about the person, right? So I actually have an angle eyebrow. And uh, so they'll actually enhance that feature when they're drawing it out or somebody may have wide cheeks or a large chin, whatever it is that a cartoonist would overemphasize, that's what you wanna look at first. The other thing is what I'm gonna teach you today is specifics like the eyebrows. So if you know a specific feature, you can just become an expert at that one feature and test it. You don't have to believe me, go out and try it. If it works, just keep using it. Worst case scenario, eyebrows lead to eye contact. You're still gonna create a connection with people. So with that, what do we do? What's the whole purpose of this? Instead of saying what I want to say, when you focus on how would it be best received by the person I'm talking to, it changes the dynamic. If you've ever gone anywhere, and I love to travel when we could travel overseas, I found that when I first went as the obnoxious American, expecting everybody to speak English, I had one type of trip. When I changed the mentality to going to learn basic phrases, please, thank you, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I was showing other people that I cared enough to attempt it and it changed how all of my trips went. Because if you give something a shot, they treat you differently than if you just, well, number one, you should speak English. And if you don't speak English, I'll just speak English louder because somehow that's going to work, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, when you're learning to speak somebody else's language, it just changes it because you're speaking to them. And if you've ever heard of the RES, the reticular activating system, why is it in an entire crowded room when somebody says our name, we can pay attention. So our brains are always searching for our people speaking to us. And when you modify it, it just changes everything. And yes, I'll go over this later, but it does work both personally and professionally. So <laughs> basics is who am I going to be communicating with? What do I see or read on their face? And then how should I modify my approach? Again, all this is how do we change it? So it's about the other person, not ourselves. I like to teach eyebrows, like I mentioned earlier, on the training course that I have. I put in phrases like this, just browsing, because I want people it to stick in their head, right? I was raised on Dr. Seuss. I rhyme. I make weird things that stand out, so it's easy for everybody to remember. People ask me all the time, why do I start with eyebrows? Because for the people who are listening, there's three people in three different pictures, and they're changing who's in front, who's in back. And in all three of the pictures, you can still see the shapes of their eyebrows. doesn't matter if they're the first person in line or the third person in line you can see the basic shapes of their eyebrows. And for anybody who thinks eyebrows aren't really that important, go and Google people without eyebrows. And that's what I have up on the screen here. And it always brings up actors and actresses and then it removes their eyebrows and you don't even recognize who they are. So, uh, so like, creepy, <laughs> isn't it? I, I always tell people, I don't suggest doing this at night, but uh, <laughs> yes, this it is, you don't recognize people. So we never really think about eyebrows but they actually tell us a lot about people from a distance. And that's why they're still here. Um, going into eyebrows a little bit more. Why are they one of the few things that stays on our face? I Meaning obviously guys can have beards, but why out of this whole area do eyebrows still stay there? And that's because it's all about eye protection and eye filters. So when we're born, we're born with a fear of heights and a fear of loud noises. But we, if we're lucky enough to be born with sight, that's how we learn to take it in the world first. So it makes sense that our bodies created something to protect those eyes. And so it was meant to keep out dirt, dust, water, you name it. And the funny thing is eyebrows still teach us how do people filter that information when it's being taken in and how do they process information? Um, people ask all the time after this, what after visual? 
Well, the second is people put things in their mouth when they're kids. Afterwards, they learn to listen. And it's by listening that we learn to speak. And so that's why eyes on babies are always large. And then what happens over time is depending on if they become more auditory or kinesthetic or, uh, and like to talk, those features will change as well. Am I blowing your mind so far? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but like I said, go play with it, test it, reach back out to me. Um, it'll just change the way you see everybody. I like to start with eyebrow height. And the reason why is if you think of data, I'd mentioned earlier that our eyes are the very first input organs that we have. If you imagine data racing down your forehead, if your eyebrows high, it's like a speed bump in the middle of the road. So it has to slow down, wait for a minute and then get into your eye. And versus if the speed bump is really close to your eye or your eyebrows close to your eye, then data can race down your forehead. And it's an easy metaphor to think of how fast does the data come in so I can make a decision. So the higher the eyebrow is, it's like it's something in the middle of the road where you have to speed up, slow down, go over the speed bump, and you can never really get to full speed. But the speed bump's right by the stop sign, then you can race down that road and you'll have to slow down at the last minute. With that being said, if you look at somebody whose eyebrows are high compared to their eye, then again, data comes down, it needs to slow down, give them time to make up their mind. So these are people who like to take in additional information. They hate, hate, hate being forced to make a rash decision. And there's a lot of people who think it's a fun game to force people like, I'm going to make this quick sale and I'm going to do this. You may make a sale, but you've lost a relationship. And when you're looking at someone, that's what it's about. One-time sales are great or one-time getting to meet someone is great. But if you make them uncomfortable, they will purposely avoid you in the future. So if you see somebody whose eyebrows are high, then what you know is give them time to make a decision. Start with some information, give them some breathing room, come back. It doesn't have to be a same call close. Or if you're talking to somebody, you don't have to immediately get their phone number right now. You can talk to them a little bit later, then go network with some other people or socialize and then come back and talk to them again. But again, the higher the eyebrow, the more time they make. So if you think of data, slowing down, give them time before it comes in. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Next one. When you see eyebrows that are very low and close to the eyes, those are a race to the finish kind of people. And what that means is they understand that data can race right down their forehead and come into their eye. So they understand concepts very quickly. Now, with people who understand things quick, their challenge is they don't have a lot of patience for everybody else. So they want to help you get there as well. And so they tend to interrupt people because they're trying to help you get there as fast as they are. So if you meet somebody who's, that's got a very low eyebrow, they understand it. And they're like, okay, come on, come on, come on, let's go. What, what's taking everybody else so long? And that's why they tend to interrupt other people. It's not meant to be anything bad. They're just excited. They got it. And they want to help other people get there at the same time. So that's it for the eyebrow heights, high and low. And there's three basic shapes. And I love talking about the shapes because as kids, we're all given the blocks where you have a shape and you try to figure out which hole does it fit into and eyebrows are no different. So the three basic ones are a straight eyebrow, an angled eyebrow, and a rounded eyebrow. So I like to call a straight eyebrow, get straight to the point. The angled eyebrow, what's my angle? And the rounded eyebrow is the well-rounded. They think about the people around them. So when you're looking at someone, that has a straight eyebrow, get straight to the point, facts, figures, data, and stop talking. Because they, the, the, they want the basic information and then they're gonna ask you questions of what other information they want. So this is the kind of person here, if you see this and they've got a straight eyebrow, if I keep talking, they mentally start moving away because they get bored easily, they've already got the concept and now you're just trying to fill me with fluff and crap that I don't care about. So you just stop. So facts, figures, data, and shut up. Let them ask you questions. Or you can say, what other information can I get you? So talking to people in different industries, real estate, what's the price? What's the interest rate? What's the square footage? How many bedrooms? How many baths? Stop, right? If you were selling them a car, what's the gas mileage? What's the finance rate? What's the total cost of the car? Um, you know, just basic facts and figures, and then let them ask you other questions. Make sense? It does. All right. Angled eyebrows. What's my angle? Help me understand it so I can help other people. I can identify with this one because I actually have an angled eyebrow. Now you're going to see pictures of me here a little bit later where I did not have an angled eyebrow. And that's when they used to be a different one. But when I became a corporate trainer, 
I had to understand the material so I could teach it to other people. So when I see angles, I always think, what's my angle? Help them understand it and involve them in the process. Then they'll be your biggest cheerleaders that are out there. So when you're talking to them and you see an angle, then you say, okay, well, well, what do you think? That's involving them in the process. And that's what makes them a happy camper. Now I'm going to blow your mind here in a second. Remind me, come back to the, uh, we're all a little bit two-faced after this next eyebrow. Okay. But um, then you have a rounded eyebrow. So when you see rounded eyebrows, they think about the people around them first and themselves second. So if you're talking to somebody, let's say that you're a realtor and you, you see somebody who has rounded eyebrows and you ask them what they want in the house, you'd say things like, so who's going to come visit you? Are you going to entertain other people? Are you looking for neighbors? That's how people with rounded eyebrows think is the people around them first and themselves second. If I'm talking to them in a social situation or in a business situation, socially, oh, so tell me about your friends. Oh, where's your family from? You name it. If I'm talking to them in a business situation. So is this, gonna, is this product for your coworkers? Is this for your customers? Because that's what they think about are the other people first. Then I come back and ask them questions about themselves. These people with rounded eyebrows, because they are always thinking about other people, these are the people who love like Yelp and, you know, all these guides and everything because always look up like, oh, well, what does everybody else recommend? They love opinions from other people. So if you are selling to somebody who has a rounded eyebrow, testimonials go a long way. All right. Yeah. So I know it's a lot, okay, right? Wait. In a short period of time. And you, you said, talk to you about, ask you about two-faced people. Yes. Okay. We all have two different sides of our face. So we have a professional side and a personal side. And for everybody listening in auditory, and an easy way for everybody to remember it is, if I ask you, hey, are you married? It's a personal question. So where a wedding ring would be is the personal side of your face. So this is how you handle, this is my personal world. And then on the right side is your professional world. And we can actually have different types of eyebrows. I'm gonna show you an example of this here in a minute. It is crazy. Because people, after they first hear about this and I do a training class, the first thing they start doing is they go find a mirror and they cover up half their face. Well, you and know, you it's interesting because yeah. I remember in the photo world, uh, years and years ago, looking at various people and they were teaching us at that point that each side of your face is completely different. And sometimes it's completely different. And Absolutely. I think one, the only person that they showed us that sides of her face were almost identical with Jacqueline Smith, but that's it. It's yes. And I'm going to go into why that is in a second of genetics versus epigenetics. What's crazy is why are we not taught this, right? It's part of our language. It used to be taught in schools way back in the early uh, 1700s, like during the Renaissance age, it was part of our education process. And then it got taken away because when phrenology was taught, which is bumps in the head, you say like, oh, hey, you got a bump here. You're going to be a criminal. Let's throw you in jail. And when they threw out phrenology, because it claimed to be a science, then they said, oh, well, face reading needs to go as well. And I honestly, I call it facial analysis, because as soon as I say face reading, people are like, oh, can you read palms too? And I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> so uh, that's why I call it facial analysis first or facial feature recognition. And then once I get to talking, people understand, then I'll say it's face reading. That's really what it is. But it, it's astounding what you can learn about people. And in, as far as advertising goes, they tried taking a half of somebody's face and making a perfectly symmetrical face on the other side. And we were kind of creeped out by it because yeah. we expect imperfections in people. So you're absolutely right. Um, we were talking earlier about the kinesthetic people. I know people listening can't see it. These are cards I bring to my training so people can draw out facial features while we're in there because you have your auditory people who are listening to me talk. You've got the visual people who are watching the PowerPoint. And then for the kinesthetic people, they can draw on the faces. And when you're drawing the features, it helps you learn what that feature is and ingrain it in your body as well. So um, fun little tips and tricks, right? For when you're dealing with different mm. people. <laughs> um, based on what we saw earlier today, if you looked at the two people who are here, so she has rounded eyebrows and a little bit of space. And then he's got straight eyebrows that are very close to his eyes. So if you were selling to them, and a lot of this goes back to selling because people are always interested. They can, for some reason, make a better analogy on selling something first and then personally different. But with her, you would know she has rounded eyebrows. So in this particular picture, I was helping an RV dealership figure out how to increase sales for their salespeople. So I would turn to her. She has rounded eyebrows. And I would say like, oh, where are you planning on taking the kids on this? You know, is anybody else going to be coming with you? What are people most excited to see? 
And then I would, because her eyebrows are high, I would give her time to think about those. And I would come over and talk to him. He's straight to the point. All right. So we already talked about the gas mileage, what you need to get this up and running, what your interest rate is, the price of the vehicle. Uh, what else do you need? Would you like to know about it? And then he's going to tell me what he wants. And once I'm done with him, then I'll focus back on her again. And that gave her a little bit of time to think about what her questions are. So you can deal with the same people and you can um, handle them separately, but get to the same endpoint. And let's say we we're to meet these people in a social environment. Well, I'd ask her first, like, oh, you know, when this is done, where, where are you most excited to go on a trip with somebody else? And I get to learn two things. Number one, who do they go on vacation with? Number two, asking people about where they vacation will tell you a hell of a lot more than what they do for a living. So that's my networking question. When I go to an event, I hate, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Because people always think, what can you do for me? And mm -hmm. what happens if somebody hates their job? And now you just reminded them of that. And now they dislike you because you reminded them of something they hate. So I always ask that type of question. There's so many other features about their face, but we'll be way over time if I keep going. <laughs> um, this is another good example of all the different types of eyebrows. So on the upper left, you see that she's got rounded eyebrows, a kind of high space, so you know, ask her questions about other people, give her time coming to the lady in the middle. So if you look on her personal side, cause that would be where her wedding ring is. She's got a straight eyebrow. And then on her professional side, she has an angle eyebrow. So that's a perfect example of someone that you would treat differently. If you're asking her a personal question versus a professional question, huh. and you can literally do this with people all day long. And the best part, the whole reason why, and I think you guys can see my cursor here. The reason I, why I named the company Subtle Skills is because you don't tell people that you're reading their face. And so subtle is basically what are little things you've learned. And so it's a combination. While face reading is the number one thing that I teach, I teach body language. We talk about mirroring and matching. You know, how do you repeat people's language back to them? There's all kinds of things, but these are all subtle skills that have helped enhance my life. And that's why I stalked the website, right? So the, my original website was a learn to read faces.com, which is good. And I still have that, but it redirects to subtle skills because you don't walk into a room and go, I just read a body language book and stare at people. It's the same thing. And I think that's why a lot of people don't know about face reading because if you share it, then people are suddenly like, Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's great. Okay. And it's <laughs> funny. So I call it the skill that makes people want to lean in and look away because everybody's fascinated to learn it and use it, but nobody likes the idea of, Oh, what's he thinking? Why stares at me? So yeah. To answer Just my don't question, don't use it on me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't use it all the time. I do use it when I first meet somebody because I'm looking at eyebrows. Mm -hmm. But unless I'm sitting there purposely doing it, it's not something that you sit there and focus on somebody. So it's not that you're constantly analyzing somebody. You're just searching for something to get in and create that connection. And then you just go into your normal conversation. Hmm. And uh, a lot of the questions that we get asked is, this is bull crap. It's all genetics. It's what I'm born with. That is correct. So you're born with a genetic code that you inherit from your parents. What happens is what's called epigenetics. So epigenetics is what have you experienced in life that has affected you? And the mind creates movement, movement creates muscle. And that's what changes and alters our face over time. And the example I love to show, and this is for the people who are listening, is I got a picture of a guy who only goes to the gym and does upper body, right? So he's got huge biceps and big chest and arms and everything, and these little tiny legs. And you can't say that's genetics. That is the muscles that he chose to work expanding and growing. That's no different than your face. And what's ironic is you can take identical twins, same genetic code, same parents, but different life experiences. Some may have struggled academically. Some may have struggled in their romance. Some may in physically, like maybe they weren't the best athlete. And even identical twins have subtle differences in their face. And that's what created it. And people go, nope. Nope. Can't be real. None of that matters. Okay. Find someone who had a stroke. What happens is they lose all the uh, muscle muscle control of this face. What happens? It all droops and we don't recognize the person. It's also the reason why if you ever go to an open casket funeral, we don't recognize the person either because all the facial muscles have relaxed and you don't see that tension that's there anymore. Huh. And yeah. And what is Botox? Botox paralyzes a muscle to make a line go away temporarily. But why do you have to go back and get additional Botox? Because those muscles start to work again after the Botox wears off and those lines come right back. Hmm. So <laughs> let me ask you this. If it's if some of this is based on life experiences, can you then 
create better life experiences and therefore change how your features will be? So people are going to think you set me up for this one. You ready for it? (laughs) That's me at 18 versus 38. And if you look over here on the the younger picture of me, my eyes used to angle down. Mm -hmm. I was raised with great parents, but my stepdad was a problem solver. So he could always find a problem with everything. And so I was raised in kind of a negative environment. And so when your eyes angle down, you're always looking for obstacles and problems. As I got into self-development and professional success, my eyes started to angle back up. So that's the first thing you'll notice is look at over here, how my eyes angle down to such a degree and look at them today, even over here and it angles up. Um, eyebrow. So we talked about earlier, here's my old eyebrow, which was straight on my personal side, or I'm sorry, my professional side. Look at it now it's angled. I didn't go and get that done. That's how my face altered over time. And there's several other things on my face that for people who are watching it, But you can look and see how different I look. Not only did I have really cool hair back when I was 18, like I knew I wasn't going to have it, but look how much my face has changed. And I haven't had any procedures done. Um, To answer your question a little bit further, that's the entire reason that the makeup industry exists. That's the reason why um, plastic surgery is so popular right now. So women have the advantage of lipstick to enhance lips, rouge to enhance cheeks, right? Eyeshadow for eyelids all kinds of things. And a lot, it's very popular right now to have your eyebrows bladed. Well, you don't Mm -hmm. walk into someone and you have like a rounded eyebrow and they go, low, let's give you a straight one. They really enhance what you already have there. However, there are people that completely shave off their eyebrow and draw on what they want to portray to the world. So you can actually impact what you want to be seen as no different than you put on clothing. That kind of says a little bit about you guys can do it with beards right? Some guys could wear lipstick. I, you know, Hey, whatever floats your boat, but women can enhance lips with lipstick, lip liner. So if you have what's called a Cupid's bow right here in your lip, which is like a subconscious arrow saying, listen to me when I talk, I tell people all the time, then use lip liner to enhance that when you're giving a presentation and people will literally stare at your lips for guys. I always teach them to trim this upper lip right here because this is our personal lip and this is our professional. When we can't see somebody's upper lip, we don't know if we can trust them. And if you know, this is crap, lips aren't that important, then why are lip injections the number one plastic surgery that's being done right now? Right? (laughs) I know, I'm telling you, it goes so deep down the rabbit hole, I could talk about this for days and days. It's the number one thing that changed my life. Personally, professionally, I used to go out and sit. I love to be around people like I mentioned earlier, but I never felt like I could be part of the moment because I was too busy in my own head. But when I learned to create connections with other people, just by looking at their face, it it really does change how you interact with people. I mentioned earlier, uh, you and I were talking before we started recording, (laughs) I had to take an earlier flight. All I did is I walked up, I paid attention to the gate agent who was going to check me in because I was doing standby. And I said, well, I guess we're going to have to all start yelling at you now. You know, you, you control the weather, you control the plane. So if my flight's delayed, do I come and yell at you, right? Because it's all your fault. And I was joking with her. And then I just talked to her for a minute and she had rounded eyebrows. So I talked to her a little bit. I'm like, oh, so how are your coworkers doing with this? I hope everybody treats you nice while you're here. I know it's not always the funnest job. Guess what? Not only did I make it on that flight on standby, I got bumped up to first class. All because I treated somebody differently. Now, I, I did benefit from that. But you know who else benefited? Everybody else she checked in. So I'd love to... Focus on the people that everyone else ignores, servers, bartenders, um, people who check you in at the hotel, people at the airport. All they ever do is get yelled at because, oh, well, you're charging me for a baggage fee or you control the weather or, you know, it's your fault, blah, blah, blah. Treating those people not only enhances their day, you get, you feel good when you make other people feel good, right? But then every person behind you gets that ripple effect from it. We all love to go and pay for, you know, the next person in line, Starbucks, because what do they do? They post about it and it creates a great day. What about treating every person that we interact with that everybody else ignores like a person? Give them five seconds of your time. Just check out their eyebrows. And just by doing that again, it makes them feel seen and heard. Give them eye contact and it will just completely change your world. Um, Another question I get asked is, how does this work in the dating world? I actually created a course called uh, looking for love and all the wrong faces because during COVID all my friends went to online dating. And so if you go to looking for love and all the wrong faces.com, you'll see examples, but 
everybody can lie on their online profile of, well, I'm this or that, but I can tell you I had a failed marriage because my wife had more eyelid than I did, which is she thinks in terms of we had very little eyelid. So I think in terms of I, and we would have to have these little disagreements. Like when I was going to get something from the store, she was auditory and I'm visual. So she'd say, I need this, 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 and this. And I would go out and come back like two of the right things and five of the wrong things. And so we had to devise a system that if I was the one going to the store, you need to text me what you want and I'll come back. However, when she was going to the store, I'd want to text her all the things to get. And she's like, stop, just tell me what you want. And so we had to alter what we were doing when we were communicating with each other. And knowing that going into a relationship, like if you know if somebody, are we the same? Or is it something that it's totally fine to be different, but you have to learn to address it earlier as well. And that's the reason I created that course. But um, it seems to me that that course would also work for business partnerships as well, because it's, it's just a different type of partnership. It is. So people always think that this can only be useful for sales. You know, where it's the most effective is team building and getting along with your coworkers and getting along with your spouse, your friends, you name it. It's pretty common. I mentioned earlier that at an event with a bunch of chiropractors last week in Phoenix with Steve Sims, one of the girls that got up, she had rounded eyebrows, which now everybody understands. She thinks about the people around her. She had that verbal affirmation line that's right here. She started tearing up and crying because it was the first time she felt seen and heard. Well, the benefit of that was she felt seen and heard. But the other part was now people know how to talk to her and how to treat her so that they know she's a words of affirmation person. And she always wants you to know, ask her about the people in her life. And by doing that, you do create that connection because you're speaking her language again. So you're absolutely correct. It, can, it all bleeds over. I'm going to do an event this Friday at one of the largest mansions here in Dallas. And they come every year. And inherently, people want to come up and say either, can I sit and listen to you read somebody's face or can you do it together? And if it's a couple, I'll say, all right, well, would you guys like to know what you have in common or where your differences are? And if we talk about differences, I can guarantee you 90% of the time, the answer is, why the hell did we go through therapy when this guy could just told us to look at each other's face? I'm like, I know, but nobody knows that it's there. So you're absolutely correct. Awesome. Team building, team bonding. Uh, matter of fact, I'm speaking in April for the Texas Educators Association. And I said, oh, do you want this to be about your students? They said, students are absolutely important, but we have to learn how to work with each other too. So my first point of it is going to be about understanding your peers and then your uh, students afterwards. So no, I went through a lot in a short period of time. Um, this QR code, people can scan, they can send me a text, they can send me an email, they can go and download the three eyebrows cheat sheet from here. And if they're interested in the course, it's all there. Um, for anybody who's listening to it auditory, it's just subtleskills.com or at Instagram, it's at subtle skills. I know I threw a lot at you. What, what questions do you have? I, I'm just fascinated by the whole thing. I truly am. And I, I personally want to dive into it more as well, because when I work with people, part of my job is to make them feel seen and heard. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be able to better accomplish that. So I might have to check everything out that you had. (laughs) Oh yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll, for fun, you can send me a picture of somebody that you're like, whoever your next guest is. And then what we'll do is we'll just break down their face. Like uh, here, I'll show you examples uh, real fast of what I do on a pretty regular basis. Um, let me go find sketch because I, I literally do this, like I mentioned before, um, pop this one up. So I need to go back to zoom, share screen. So like, this is somebody that I've never met, but I just went and they said, Kay, can you read my face? And I went and grabbed what stands out about their face. Mm-hmm. And so I look at all these things. I know what each of those features mean. And so when I'm talking to them, like upward angle eyes is that's your optimist. They're always looking for the upside of things. So I know if she's an optimist and let's say I'm, I'm selling something to her. Then I talk about the product. Like, here's all the benefits. Here's all the features. How, here's how everybody went. If it was like, I used to be as a kid, my eyes angled down. I'd talk about what problems we overcame while we were building the product. Because then people are like, oh, okay, well then they've answered my question. See, it's that easy. Yeah. So fascinating. Yes. So if people take nothing else away from this episode, what would you like them to take away? Look, you can, 
just keep thinking, what are the three basic shapes of the eyebrows? You don't even have to get it right, but eyebrows lead to eye contact. This day and age, people don't feel seen and heard. They're constantly bothered by smartphones, smartwatches. People are craving attention now more than ever. And giving people five seconds of your time changes their world, changes your world, and has a ripple effect to everybody else that they interact with. So just focus on people, give them your time and attention. It will change your life. Love it. And with that, Brian, I just have four final questions for you. Yep. Let's go. First one. What's the best piece of advice you were ever given? Uh, Go see and do. You can always leave something versus seeing at home and wondering what if. Mm. So for example, if there's a networking event that I'm kind of on the fence about, my answer is go and I can always leave and not kick myself in the butt of should I have gone? Would I have missed out? on that thing. So that I will admit that's a little bit of FOMO. My answer is by going and leaving, I don't have it as much. Mm. Mm. Share with us one thing on your bucket list. Uh, I want to, let's see, I had a story earlier and I don't know, I'm at 28 countries right now I've been to. I want to go beyond that. Um, Eventually that is the goal is probably get closer to 30 or 40. Uh, Actually, you know what? I have a bucket list. I want to take my daughter to see the world. And that is because I studied abroad and it changed my life. And I want to show my daughter what else is out there because every time I go to another country, I learn two things. What's something I should bring back? And then what's something that I appreciate once I'm back? Mm. And you get the best of both worlds that way. Love it. Okay. When the toy companies finally get around to making an action figure of you, what two accessories will it come with? Uh, It will come with a book or a Kindle. So you can read lots of books and it'll come with a passport going back to the other (laughs) conversation that is. (laughs) You have to see the world. You have to get out of your own backyard. I've gone to places that a family of six lives in the size of my living room. And I come back grateful for everything that I have here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one more time, tell everybody where to find you. Sure. Uh, Subtleskills.com. Or if it's easier to remember, learn to read faces.com. will get you there as well. Same thing. Pretty much you can find me everywhere at Subtle Skills um, or Brian Galke, G-A-L-K-E. Love it. Thank you so much. And thanks for being here. Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Marlena Semenza, photographer and visual strategist. Please comment, like, or share this episode. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. For more information on how I can help you create your iconic image, visit MarlenaSemenza.com.